Hello, good people of YouTube and the internet at large. Um, today's care video, as you can see by the title, is going to be Venones Ornata, the uh, ornate harvestman. And uh, this will kind of go for, uh, I have a couple other species of Venones and one other unidentified species of harvestman. Um, this care video kind of goes for most of the ones found in the United States, at least. Um, it'll cover them all. They, they're all kind of kept similar. At least I keep them similarly, and they do well for me. Um, <clears throat> but before that, I actually wanted to thank you guys. Uh, we just recently passed a 1,000 subscribers, um, which is very cool. I didn't really go into this thinking I would get that many. I thought I would just, you know put up some care videos on YouTube just to, you know, as a reference. Um, but we got to a thousand, which is pretty cool. And, um, might as well, you know, keep up with the growth. So as a special thanks to you guys and, you know, to others who may be watching, but not subscribed, um, with a thousand subscribers, I actually got this like analytics tool, like 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, which I think is like, crazy. I mean, why not? It's free. And do you get to see the videos that I make when they come out? But um as a special thanks to you guys and uh other people who watch my videos and for some reason aren't subscribed, um I'm doing a giveaway. It's for 25 Porcelianides Pruinosis uh the powder blue isopod, but um, it's the newest morph, uh, Oreo Crumbles. Um, it's a morph that came out of Florida from a uh, guy named James Parks. Um, he's a cool dude, uh, a friend of mine. I do a lot of business with him. And his daughter actually discovered it. And they're really cool, black and white, kind of like, you know, kind of like the Prunosis version of Dairy Cow, I guess. Um, but a very cool morph, breeds true, and uh, my favorite isopod for a cleanup crew. So uh, check the link in the description um, for the contest to enter. Um, and there's also a community tab that also has the link. So you can see it either that way. Um, but let's actually get into the, uh, the actual care video on these guys. So their setup is fairly simple. It's a tub. Um, how many gallons is this tub? Uh... I thought it had a sticker that said it was Let's see how big is this tub. It is a... What does that say? 20 quart tub. Um, but it's more tall, I guess, than wide. Um, I prefer to keep it taller. Um, just so that you can have bark that's standing up. They live on the underneath side of bark um the care for these guys is kind of similar to like um if you've ever kept tailless whip scorpions or uh bark scorpions the care is kind of similar they need like an upright kind of bark surface in order to molt um at least it's helpful for them and it also kind of like it's a good spot for that attracts like the things that they eat which i'll get into that in a little bit um, but the substrate is uh, kind of like what I use for my isopods and millipedes. Um, compost, leaf litter, wood flake, and um, some other like organic matter in there. Um, a little bit of calcium. I'm not sure how much all that fancy stuff benefits them, but they are detritivores along with... Uh, well, they're generalists, I should say. Um, in the wild, they'll eat mites, but they'll also eat uh, random dead stuff. Uh, lichens, plant material, fungi, really just about anything. So I kind of like to give them a bunch of variety and things to eat. So I have rotting leaves and rotting wood. I also have some plants growing in here. Um, it's like some of it's like wheatgrass or catgrass, and they'll nibble on that. Um, but that's kind of like their environment. Um, I keep it fairly, the, the substrate fairly moist, not like sopping wet or anything, but really moist. Like I said, kind of like how you would keep a bark scorpion, like a Florida bark scorpion or one of the tightiest species or Damondea dama. 
Um, kind of a similar deal. Um, they do need decent ventilation, but like I said, you don't want to um, make it so that way they don't have enough humidity. So you kind of got to balance that out with, you know, your ventilation and your holes. I find that's like a, um, there's not a perfect science to that. It kind of depends on um, not only your tubs, but also the room that you're in. Like a lot of people say, like, what is the ideal, like, placement for holes and vents in your tubs? You know, that really all depends on you um, and your setup and a variety of other factors. you got to figure that out on your own. And once you dial it in, you'll be all right with these. Um, but I'll actually show you them now. Um, first, I'll show you kind of normal, and then we'll do something kind of cool. Let me see, are there any under here? Yeah, there are. So there's one. Um, I kind of feel like I need to put on the macro lens for this. Maybe I will in a minute. But there's one. Um, I don't know if I kind of explained their biology earlier. I don't think I did. But um, they are arachnids, but uh, they're not spiders. They don't have venom, which I think these could make a really good pet for like a kid or something like that because um, they are literally harmless in every way, shape, and form. Any definition of the word, they are that harmless. Um, yeah, let me get the macro lens on. And we'll take a better look at these guys. Alright, so we have our macro lens on. Um, these guys, um, at least in this colony, uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to keep still. Um, these guys, at least in this particular colony, I can turn on the light. Um, a lot of them aren't full grown. They get a little bit bigger than this. Um, but not too much bigger. They're not huge arachnids by any means. Uh, pretty cool. You kind of look at them up close. You can see they don't really have fangs so much as like mouth part type deal. Uh, <clears throat> they kind of chew on their food, really. Um, you can see that's a little orange springtail. Isn't that cool? Sorry, we're getting distracted, but I've never seen an orange springtail in my cultures before. So I'm kind of blown away by that, to be honest. Okay, questions for that later. Um, but um, I'll show you something really cool about these guys. Um, if I get my light over here. So they glow under a black light like a scorpion would. All of their little uh, stripes and stuff. Oh, and by the way... Um, you can differentiate males and females by the the striping. At least that's what I've heard. Um, I haven't really kept track of this personally myself. But I'm pretty sure it's accurate as I've noticed a difference between the size. And um, I've never actually caught any of these with babies on them. But uh, they are reproducing for me. Um, they kind of go in spurts. And then you have uh, die-offs of the colony and then spurts again. I'm not sure if that's just the nature of how they reproduce or, you know, something that we could be adjusting in captivity. But I hear this from a lot of people, um, not just me. So that at least makes me feel a little bit better. But they do, um, they are steady for me. Like they, uh, like I've never had a colony completely crash out or anything like that. They always kind of, they boom and bust. Yeah, temperatures for these guys, uh, really room temperature is fine. Um, these were collected, uh, at least the originals were collected in Florida. Um, so you can kind of imagine the weather that Florida goes through. Uh, relatively humid and hot most of the year, but can get pretty cool, especially at nighttime. Um, for the food for these guys, I like to feed them uh, mainly... Uh, Boiled carrots and fish flakes. Um, that They seem to do really, really well on that. Uh, they also eat mites and springtails. You know, they kind of catch them on their own. I've seen them 
chilling down on a mite before. Um, I wish I could get a picture of that, but, um, some of these, some of these guys, it's weird. Some of them move immediately and others are more passive and just kind of hang out. Uh, I guess it kind of depends on the individual. But yeah, uh, that's about it for these guys, honestly. Um, the care is very simple. Um, definitely in my book, a candidate for, uh, one of the better, uh, invertebrate pets for children or somebody who's looking to get into arachnids, uh, or maybe jump out of their comfort zone a little bit, but don't want to deal with like venom or anything like that. Also, I'm not sure if they can, but I've never seen these guys climb smooth plastic or glass. Um, I don't know if it's that they can't or they just don't choose to, but, um, yeah. So, uh, pretty, pretty good for a pet, for a, for a kid or something like that. Someone who's clumsy or, um, doesn't want to deal with something super fast or possibly, you know, have a painful bite. These guys can't even bite a person. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty cool if you ask me. But I'll show you some of the rest. I'll take off the macro lens. And then we will place this here. Hold on. Alright. I'm going to show you some of the rest of them. I think there's like about a dozen adults here and some really, really tiny babies. Sorry, I had the black light <laughs> in my mouth. That's the only way I could coordinate this. But I just wanted to show you them. Very, very cool. Highly recommend. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, thanks again for a thousand subscribers. Hope you guys have been enjoying the videos I've been putting out. Um, I try to keep it kind of diverse if I can. Um, not just any of one thing or the other. I'm um, hoping to get some other types of videos in pretty soon now. Um, I'm probably going to do some, uh, maybe another isopod video later this week. And I'll probably put up some field herping stuff. And then maybe something different. Maybe like a roach or uh, maybe a scorpion. I could do a scorpion. Why not? There's not a lot of scorpion care videos out there. At least not for some of the less common stuff. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and these cool little guys. Um, I'll catch you next time. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, tell your friends about the contest. And uh, good luck to you all. Good night.